Hey guys, Pete here from the Sunday Drive. Right now it's in the middle of March and it's literally snowing out. So I have a 2004 Silverado and the brakes on my truck decided to go out while I was on the highway. And so that's what today's video is about, rust and brake lines. <laughs> The brakes are gone. Now, something that makes me sick to my stomach more than anything else is rust. And it's also something that we all have to deal with because a lot of components on cars are made out of steel. So, I mean, there's really no way to get around it, especially if you live in the rust belt you're gonna be susceptible to rust and it's going to take over your car and it's painful to watch. And of course, one of the most common components that uses steel on your vehicle are brake lines. Now the brake lines deliver brake fluid to all of the wheels in your car so that you can apply braking pressure and slow your vehicle down. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's a hydraulic uh, system. Steel is commonly used because of price and all too often the brake lines rust through especially up here in the Rust Belt where there's salt in the roads and it corrodes everything and it's, it's really, it's actually terrifying because it's very hard to stop. So what I want to talk about today is an alternative to steel brake lines that in my opinion is not only much safer but easier to work with and even though it's slightly more expensive, it's totally worth it. And it's called NICOP and I can't believe I've never heard of it before and don't worry, NICOP did not pay me any money to say this, like this stuff is incredible. But basically what NICOP is, it's a nickel copper mixture and it doesn't rust. So first of all, I just wanna say, do not confuse this with regular copper tubing. Copper tubing is not safe for brake line applications, but nickel copper is completely safe, completely legal. It's OE specified, it's easier to bend, it never rusts, it's, it's definitely like to me the end all solution. So there's a few things that I've learned about NICOP since working with it and learning more about it. So the first is strength, second, the corrosion resistance properties of NICOP tubing. Third would be the flexibility. Fourth would be the ease of flaring. And then the fifth is the cost. So I'm gonna hit those points real quick and talk about why I think this stuff is the solution um, for most applications. Now also I wanna say that you should never repair small segments of corroded or rusted out steel brake line tubing. It's just better to replace the entire line from front to finish. And I know that doesn't really sound like what you wanna hear because it's not the easy way, but honestly, it's the safer way. And you can't really put a price on the safety with brakes because like I said, I was driving on the highway recently and my brakes went out and it was the most terrifying moment of my life to not have control. And I don't wanna ever be in that situation again. Another thing is this is a 25 foot roll of NICOP uh, brake line. This is something that you would bend on your own, but you can also buy pre-bent steel brake line or a pre-bent stainless steel brake line. The convenience is that you don't have to do any of the bends and you don't have to measure anything out and everything just works. The inconvenience is sometimes it's not that easy. Um, in the case of my Silverado, the brake line runs between the frame and the cab and I would literally have to remove the cab or lift the cab up in order to get to some spots if I was using the pre-bent brake line. Also, brake line on many vehicles may run over the gas tank in the rear, and so you'll have to drop the gas tank in some situations. When you have stuff like this, you can kind of fish it through where you need to go and bend it as you need. So the first thing is strength. I mean, how strong is this stuff? Is it really as good as steel brake line or stainless steel brake line? And the answer is pretty much yes. While NICOP does have a slightly lower um, strength rating, it's still well above what's necessary for a common passenger vehicle. For instance, most passenger vehicles will experience between 800 and 1200 PSI, and it could go up to 2000 PSI. Now this NICOP brake line that I have can handle up to 3000 PSI um, continuously, and it can handle up to 12,000 PSI in bursts. So right there, that's how you know it's, it's good enough for our application. Like I said earlier, don't confuse this with regular copper tubing. Copper tubing typically has a thinner wall and it's not as strong. And if you try to flare it, it might split. It's, it's, it's a lot of things. You don't want to use copper tubing. It is not legal in most states. It might not even be legal in any state. I'm not totally sure. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is corrosion resistance. And NICOP tubing is like 88% copper. It might be like 88.7% copper. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that copper doesn't really rust. It oxidizes, 
but doesn't rust. So that's a huge benefit right there. Now there's also the argument that they make coated steel brake lines, which also prevents rust and corrosion. But the problem is as soon as that coating is compromised, the rust will still find a way and take over. Another awesome characteristic of the NICOP brake line is the fact that since it's mostly copper, which is a softer metal, it's a lot more flexible and easy to bend. You don't need any special tools to put bends in the nigh copper brake line. And that right there is a huge benefit because maybe you want to run a straight piece through a, um, like a tight section and then do the bend afterwards. So you don't have to run any unions or junctions on the brake line, which will make it a lot less likely or prone to uh, leaking because there's less fittings, less connections. It's just more simple design. It's also a lot easier to flare. So flaring is something that you really need to get right to make sure that there are no leaks in the entire braking system. Because if there's a leak, uh, you're basically compromising your braking system and again, your safety. So one of the issues is maybe NICOP doesn't look very nice to most people. Some people really do like the look of stainless steel. And personally, I think stainless steel looks beautiful, but stainless steel is more expensive, it's extremely hard, and to put flares on it can be a challenge. Bending st uh, stainless steel tubing, that can also be a pain. Now I do want to bring up cost though, because cost is a major factor to a lot of people. I had to go to a local store because I needed it as soon as possible, and I ended up paying a pretty large premium on it. It was like $60 for 25 feet of quarter inch brake line tubing. So ultimately I paid around $2.50 a foot, but you can get it much cheaper online. For instance, if you go to Amazon, you can get this stuff for like $37 for 25 feet, which is way more affordable in my opinion. And that cost premium is totally worth it over steel brake lines because it's going to outlive steel brake lines for many, many lifetimes. So there's no doubt in my mind that this stuff is totally worth the price for me. If I was doing something for a show vehicle and I wanted it to look perfect and beautiful, I would probably use stainless steel for a lot of it. But this stuff for my daily driver truck that I just don't want the lines to rust out on me ever again, I want this to be the last time I replace the brake lines for its entire lifetime. So that's it guys. If you found this video helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. And thanks for watching.